<clears throat> can, can you can you see my screen or not? No, it's just loading. I think. Okay, I've I've rebooted my computer. I think. Can, can you see it now? Or no, not yet. No. Hold on a sec. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All good. All right. So where to start? Where to start? Okay. Let Let me open up a file. Can Can everyone hear me? Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's um. Let's start. All right. So when we when we the the, the wax up is is a lot about symmetry so you, you know we we want to we want to get what's on the left to the right so mirror imaging we're focusing a lot about um on mirror imaging because i mean beauty is symmetry so to to get that we need to align the models in such a way that we can allow for um for for mirror effect to happen um and th th there's a lot of focus on 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 mirror imaging so um what we what we've got here we've got a, a medit uh, facial scan and um so with the with the articulator mo module we're going to um we're going to position the, the upper model and the lower model and the face all together so that we can then ultimately mirror image at everything. So what we need for the articulator, we need an upper and a lower model, but we've got three objects. We've got the facial scan as well. So what, I, what I've done is um, we've, we've joined the facial scan with, with the lower model. So I'll just separate those quickly. So I've, in the model designer, I click separate. So I mean, obviously, when you import this, these objects into the, the blender, they'd all be separate objects. So then in the articulator, um, what we're going to do is we're going to join the facial scan and we're going to join the lower model. So shift left click to select the model last and then we go control j which is the shortcut um, to join so these shortcuts are very important to familiarize yourself with and we've got that in the um in the folder wolfgang where do you, where do we keep those shortcuts it's in the model designer we have a, sh a shortcut key a pdf uh, file there so you can download that All right. All right, so I've joined the, the facial scan with the lower model and I'm going to name the, the top model upper and the, the face with the lower model I'm going to name lower. So now we've got two objects in the scene, not three, that because the two are, are joined. And then I'm going to click on mounting table. This, this brings in like a, like a table where we, we can then, um, we can align the, 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 the top model and whatever we do on the top, the, the lower and the face will follow, even though we don't see them. So I'm going to click on bottom and we're going to move that basically to this specific, this specific stopper, we call it stopper, the line. So the, the ovals that you see here are not 100% accurate all the time but that gives us an indication when we're bringing in our tooth library that the tooth library is actually snapping onto or very closely to those ovals so um, if if they don't align 100 percent, that's not the end of the world but what is important is to get this more or less correct and of course the the rotation we may we want we may want to rotate it at the stage as well. So once we've got this, um, we can look at it from the right side, we can move it up and down, and then we're going to unhide the lower, and then we're going to delete the table. Now this means now that uh, what we've got on the left is almost similar to what we've got on the right, and then we've finished with the articulator um, module as, as itself. Then I'm going to go into the wax up and then we can start waxing. And in this case, let us wax a few veneers. <clears throat> in the wax up module, we've got um, 
input generic teeth and import hollow teeth. Now there's a very big difference between hollow teeth and solid teeth. Solid teeth we use for for aligning teeth into the um, the model for for diagnostic wax up. Hollow teeth we use for for gum, for pontex, <clears throat> for um, for thimbles, for for all of those things, and um, from time to time, we have to make our tooth library hollow because they may not always be hollow. And we've, we've got special functions to do this. Yeah, just, so here, um, for example. Just a minute, Michael. <clears throat> um, in, in the Blender for Dental <clears throat> shop, we, uh, we have both the solid um, tooth um, libraries and the equivalent hollow. Um, and the generic um, tooth libraries in the actual menu uh, you've got the, the, the hollow and the solid as well. So we, we, we try and focus on supplying both of those. So that'll save you a lot of time. But in saying that, if you purchase a tooth library somewhere else, for example, you make your own, <clears throat> you can hollow those teeth with the with a arch cut tool. So just excuse me for a second. Uh, my, my voice got stuck there a little bit. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is we're going to import a generic set of teeth. So the, f the face scan itself, we can, we can actually remove that off the model now. We don't, we don't need that. And all over the module, you will see the separate button. And that will separate one object from another, whether they are teeth or whatever objects, they'll separate them. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this facial scan and just move it using the M key and I'll move it into a collection. And this is very important. Object management is one of the most important things in all of our modules because sometimes you may have 60 or 100 mo um, models on the scene and we need to know how to, do, how to be using the outliner window. And we've got specific tutorials on that, but I won't go too deep into this now. So then what we're going to do is we're going to choose, we're going to import a generic tooth library. Now we've got, um, we've got a few tooth libraries in our, in our shop and the components module. And um, anyway, the first step what we, we see is that these, and um, because we've got it in vertex color mode, where we can see the biological colors. I'll just flick it over to texture. These actually turn gray and this will notify the user that they've, they've been placed into a collection called Wax Up, these teeth. So if you're importing a different type of tooth library, first thing that you've got to do is move these into this collection. And we do that so that we can give these teeth a name called teeth. Everything works in, 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 um, with names in, in the scripting. So if these aren't called teeth, then it's not going to work as it should be working. All right, so we're going to choose some teeth and we're going to click on the choose button and we're just going to draw a, a color on that and we're going to delete unwanted. And that will take everything else away. And we're going to place these teeth. And this will place it sort of more or less where we want. And if if the shape, say for example, the shape is no good and you think, oh no, this is no good. I don't want these teeth. We can delete all of these teeth and then we can go into the component module and we can look for some other teeth, for example. So just say we're going to um, use um, a different set of teeth. So solid and we're going to append those into the scene and we'll just wait for them <clears throat> to be entered. All right, so <clears throat> they are, uh, they already been placed over here. Okay, I'll just move them forward a little bit. So these teeth may be more suitable. Um, it is a good idea to color your, your model so that you can actually see the difference between um, what, what you're doing, you know, with wax up. So two things, it's the outliner window, 
naming your objects and color. If you use those, it's like mathematics. In geometry, we also always used to color our, our things. So <clears throat> we'll just give this a color. So we can sort of see the difference. There we go. Or we can, alternatively, I can use the, the vertex colors. I mean, that may give it quite a nice effect. Okay. So <clears throat> we've got these teeth and I want to choose, say, the six front teeth. So again, in the, in the wax up module, we'll move this to the collection like we've discussed. We're going to choose our teeth, our six front teeth. We're going to delete the rest of them and then we can move them back into position. Okay, place, all right. So, <clears throat> now, now the next thing that I want to do is we've got in, before we start shifting them around and, and whatever, we want to maybe bring in the ratio the tooth width ratio. Maybe Wolf, can, can you talk about the tooth width yeah, ratio? Yeah, so that's the red's uh, pr proportion um, ratio, um, courtesy Dr. Daniel Ward, who's come up with this. Um, now, this is, um, it gives a <clears throat> length to width ratio of the um, single um, central, um, which is 78%. Uh, um, the neighboring lateral will, will then be downscaled into, I think it's, is it 72, Michael? Um, no, no, it's, um, it, it's, yeah, that, that's correct. And then the, the, the canine is 49%. Yeah. Now in saying that, yeah, okay, go on Wolfgang. So, um, yeah, by using the template, you're, um, you, you're basically taking the guesswork out of it. Um, it'll, it'll give you a good indication as to where to place the incisal, um, the length of the teeth. And also, if, you, if there's a, a possible a bit of gingival recontouring required. So, um, yeah, it, it, it just aids in the whole uh, getting the, the smile in, into better, perfect um, um, alignment rather than uh, guessing it just by eye kind of thing. Because sometimes seeing things digitally, um, it's quite deceptive. Small objects uh, look quite big in the digital environment. So, um, yeah, just helps you a lot. Yeah, now, now with, with, with this outline, for example, we can, if you scale it, you can scale it bigger and smaller, the 78%. <coughs> Width to length ratio will always stay the 78%, doesn't matter whether you're scaling, scaling it or not. But it gives you, like Wolfgang said, it gives you a good indication of where the incisal edges are and where possible um, uh, gingivectomies could be done. Now, but this having, said that, formula, Michael, having said that, Michael, I think the canine, I think the study was done, um, if, I, if I'm correct, um, using photos um, to create this kind of a ratio. But here we, we're actually not working with a photo. We, we're working with a 3D model in orthographic view. Of course, you can set that to panoramic, which will change it completely. But as you can see on the distal of the, the canines, we don't get an exact fit with the canines. Isn't that, Michael? And also the posterior section may differ. I mean, the arch is sometimes larger or, or narrower so wider i think it's, it's really reliable when it's sort of uh, it's a good guide for the the, the two centrals and maybe the laterals and partly the canine I, th I think so too wolfgang i think so too so okay so this is the stencil that we use and it gives you a good indication and all of our tooth libraries what I've done is I've reshaped them according to this outline. So they are all more or less very similar to this, um, this proportion. Yeah, now, whenever so, you get lost, yeah, yeah. So, um, Michael, um, you've also got on the menu, um, it, in addition to the 78, you've got 82%. Um, percent. Um, yeah. Can you just... I mean, this, this comes from, you know, Dr. Ward's research and 
You just just go into the eighty two. That's also width and length ratio, isn't it? Yeah, I was I was requested by the university in Cairo actually to put the eighty two percent in because some people have a little bit of a different tooth ratio, and hence this is why we've put it in. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah. Okay. What were you saying? Yeah, no, no, carry on. So you, you'd sort of try and get the tooth size according to that. Of course, you, you can do whatever you like, but uh, it, it just aids, aids in the whole smile design. Take the guesswork out of it. Exactly. Yeah. So with the tooth library, because we've moved them in, the, in that collection, we can now, whenever we, we, we want to select all the teeth, instead of looking for each and every tooth, we, we click on select all teeth and that will select all teeth automatically. So when, whenever you lose your selection and you want to select the teeth, click on select all teeth. And then of course you can move them. All right. So here, for example, just say, for example, we want to bring these teeth forward. Okay, not necessarily in this case, but if we do want to bring these teeth forward and then you're looking at the, the tooth, again, the tooth ratio, you will see, oh, my roots are sticking out. In that case, we can then push those, those, those root, roots backwards. Yeah, so you, you're pushing it into sense. the, the underlying dental model. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, all right, so then we can hide this. Um, let's just hide this, um, and of course we've got the orthodontic arch as well if we want to bring it. But with this case, we wouldn't really be using the orthodontic. Can you just show um, it, the arch. Arch. Michael? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we do is we have to go into our um, our module folder. I'll just go and um, get the file. Just give me a second because it's on my other screen. And then we'll just drag and drop it into the scene. So Michael, this, uh, you, can, you can virtually take any um, art, a JPEG or PNG of an arch wire or templates from any supply and just drop it in, can't you? Yes, yes, it automatically makes it um, So you get that little photo, so you've just dropped it into the 3D workspace, eh? Yeah, yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop author template, then click place. And that will place it exactly where we need it to, to, to be. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just hide the model and then we're going to use the G key. And then we can look for specific, um, like I've said to you, in this case, maybe uh, we we don't really need that, but mm -hmm. if if we're working on a large case with um, we where we want to say, for example, widen the arch, just say we've got a person there mm -hmm. that wants to have a wider arch. We can use these these templates, and then we can move the position to widen it a little bit. Say, for example, we wanted to bring the premolar out. Yeah, we can move those outwards to widen the arch. Of course, this, so this, this, gives feature, us, this feature is great for orthodontic work as well. Eh? Michael? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I reckon as well. Yeah. So look, um, we, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna move the teeth a little bit around and that's basically what we do with the diagnostic waxer. We, we're moving teeth from a tooth library into position. So yeah. the, the, the tooth library is really, you've got to focus on each tooth being its own entity, right? Or you can work in multiple, you can join them and unjoin them. So you've got to have a lot of flexibility, but being able to work with each tooth is a key, key part of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so, you, you know, we'll, we'll move the teeth and then we can adapt the teeth accordingly. And of course, the tilde key is so very important. And those, those of you who, who are not familiar with the tilde key, we use it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Some, some, people, some keyboards are lacking, uh, for, for example, the Hungarian ones, um, keyboards, they, they are problematic with that. But having said that, you can quickly reprogram that to maybe using a comma or something different. 
I've got a video in, right. the, in the model designer, um, how to change the kill, yeah. tilde key to another uh, key. All right, so let's select all the teeth and we, we want to push these gums back. All right, so I've, I've selected all, all of the teeth and I'm going to join them. This means now that I can do all the teeth in one go. I can choose between one tooth or two teeth or all the teeth in one go. So let's use all the teeth in one go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to the sculpt, use the sculpt button and then we can push, we can push those necks in like that, okay? So when you say that, in, where, where you, you're pushing it into the underlying model, aren't you? So the mesh is disappearing because all you're doing is you, you're pushing it, isn't it? Yes, we, we, we're pushing it so in Blender. It's, uh, I think it's a, um, a blob or something it's called. Let me just, oh, okay. inflate. It's called inflate. So in this case, it's negative inflate. We've, we've pushed it into the gum. And likewise, we can do here as well. We can get rid of this, you know. So if we wanted to do mock-up veneers to, to put into a patient's mouth, for example, provided that they are thick enough, okay? Yeah. So in this case, they may or may not be thick enough. So, yeah. so of course, you are thinking about the final Boolean cut in the end. You're using the model and by pushing it in, all of that's going to disappear and turn this thing into a veneer case, isn't it? Hundred percent. If 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 we had the printability of printing and composite or whatever, something like a permanent solution, we'd have it made. Because can you think we can we can take this thing permanently? So I don't know. I mean, right now we're still limited to certain thicknesses of printer and so on and so forth, you know. So <clears throat> what we can do is we can we can generate a thickness map, for example. So I'm going to select the model and I'm going to say select object to map to. All right. So then I'm going to take the teeth and we're going to look at the heat map. This gives us an indication of how thick these veneers are. Now, there's four colors, and the distance between red, which is zero, and we've got blue, which is one plus more. We've got four different colors, so 0 0.25 millimeters for each color. So we can easily see, okay, here the yellow, for example, oh, this is 0 0.25 millimeters. And here, of course, wow, we, we are way too thin. If we wanted to make mock-up veneers, for example. And in this case, we can toggle to the scalp mode and we can make sure the plus is on and we can then thicken this up accordingly so that we can get rid of that thin spot and actually you see so I've, I've gotten rid of that spot and then if we wanted to we can go exit and we can view this entire thing in wireframe mode if we want to hide the stencil the 78 percent we can just click on this little window over here and it disappears now this could be a good diagnostic tool to educate a patient and you know we can explain we, we've got to add a little bit more on this specific tooth and this tooth maybe here we want to take nip off a little edge here and there and we've we've got a good and these pictures can then just easily be printed out as well so you'll be okay. able to see maybe where you you might need to prep a little bit more or, you know where the gum needs to be yeah. altered and stuff like that and, and to get the ideal tooth length, of course. Yeah. Mm. So let's go back into texture mode. We'll select all the teeth. So select all the teeth, we, we join them, and then we go texture mode to get back into texture mode. So let us cut these things, all right? So now, or, or actually let us view it first. Let, let's have a look and see what it looks like in the face. All right, so we've got, We've got our teeth here and yeah, I mean, we can criticize, but you, you know, for this, for this quick video, we'll just leave it as, as it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let us, let us cut these teeth. So in, in the wax up right at the bottom, we've got cutting tools. Now what I initially, what I want to do is I want to select all the teeth 
and I'm going to join these and we, we're going to duplicate these because we don't want to lose what we've created. There's no going back. So I'm going to duplicate them and they, they're going to be put into a different collection here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to voxel remesh these. Okay, so we'll just click on voxel remesh. And then what we're going to do, and voxel remesh actually makes, it, it gives us a nicer mesh so that we can, we can cut. And you can see here, for example, they are joined. So everything under 0 0.1 is going to be joined. So if you put 0 0.2, you know, that join mark comes a little bit. So if it's joined, that, that's okay. You can do them all separately if you like. That's up to you. So we're going to apply that. And then we're, we're going to go select object being cut. And then we're going to choose the, the other model, which is our object making the cut. And we're going to apply that. Okay. And you can view it to see. It. Okay. So here, this one, for example, didn't cut because that one is a separate unit to this one. That's because it hasn't joined up over here. So if we had sculpted this a little bit more, it would have joined up. So I'm going to apply this cut. And I'm going to take this and do exactly the same for, for this section over there. Mm. And we're going to apply. Okay. And then here we've got our, our, our structure. So Mark, with that voxel remesh, if it's 0 0.1, theoretically the gap, if, if the gap between those two teeth had been 0 0.1, it would have fused it, wouldn't it? Yep, 100% it would so have fused because it, but because it's more. The lateral and the central are more than 0 0.1, it's left it as individual units. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there any questions before we move on to the next one? Because we've got so much to this to, to go through. I'm just going to unmute. Guys, feel free to type away. I've got a few questions about the component module. Component module is just to store things. So implants or something. It, the storage is an OBJ file format and each, P, each thumbnail is a PNG with the exactly the same name. That'll match the two. So if you want to create your own uh, component library with your own thumbnails, all you have to do is say, take that implant, if that were SDL, store it as an OBJ file with the, exactly the same name um, of that image. And then you can, you'll have that image in the, in the component module. Very, very easy to do. So yeah, and why, I, why, sorry? Sorry. Uh, uh, Wolfgang, so I assume that there is a kind of a video in a component model, model which is explaining all the procedures regarding the storing the components of a different parts like gothic arches or whatever you need to do in everyday uh, planning or whatever. Yeah? Um, actually, I've only got a document of that um, an instruction on each tooth library uh, that's bought through the shop. But I will make it available as well, a video, because uh, it's Good. a very handy feature to know how to yeah. to create your own because thumbnails. Because I, 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 was, I, I was reading through this uh, a PDF uh, and I uh, understood that it could be very much convenient to have this component module for, 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 for this kind of occasion. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll provide a video how to do that. It's very simple, though, but um, it, it's a fantastic great. feature. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, 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 great. All right, so um, you may wonder why there's an implant on my screen, and we haven't actually shown many videos. We haven't shown any videos with this specific um, uh, function. But just to, just to show you what the WaxUp module can do as well. So assuming we've, we've placed a few implant components with our implant module, Okay, so um, for example, and now we wanted to um, we wanted to put other components in it. Uh, 
into these. So just visualize for a second, we've, we've placed these with sleeves and whatever into our, mo our model, for example. We can, now we can go into the component module and this is a Medentica um, N1. So we're going to now go to the Medentica um, um, analogs and sleeves and I'm going to choose an N1 as well. And this is an this is um, this is an analog and a scan body. Now, what I want to do, for example, is I want to bring the housing and the the, the, the bottom one. This is the housing. The, this is the actual analog. Um, as you may be familiar, we we use this the internal, the internal is our housing, which goes into our model. The scan body we don't need. So I'm going to delete this. Now, the, what the wax up module does as well, it aligns things to another, another component. So for example, now just say I wanted to align this, the, the um, implant analog to the implant. So in the wax up module, what we're going to do is we're going to just go to the um, where it says um, changing to the axis. And I'm going to shift left click onto the actual um, implant body and we're going to then click match to selection. And that puts, puts it exactly where we need it to be. And then we're going to click uh, accept transforms. Let's do the same thing with this component. So I'm going to click on um, match to select it and then accept transforms. Now, why is this so important? Is because this is our entry into crown and bridge work, implantology work. Now, you can, you can imagine we've, we want to now put um, an abutment here, for example, um, a multi-unit abutment, for example. We can now easily do it. As soon as Wolfgang opens up that Medentica um, tooth um, component library, we can then bring these to our components so we can make crowns and implant bars and wh whatever frameworks. So that's important to know that this section is covered in the wax up module. So we haven't made any vid videos of that yet, but we can do so. And it's very simple because if I go shift D to duplicate this specific one, and I'm going to click on this, this one there, we can just click match to select it Jeez. and voila, it is exactly where we need it to be. Okay. That's a fantastic. So that's, yeah, well, I had that in mind, in mind when, when I designed this whole yes. thing. But yeah, I think it's, it's really very good. What's that? You always jump into these things. I don't even know you're going to come up with this kind of stuff. Eh? Thanks for telling me. It's, it's a surprise Zoom event. Yeah, now I've got to I'll get this extra pressure to get the other implant library going. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All good. Okay. Get back to waxing. Okay. okay, let's go to the next one. So, um, um, okay, mirror. Okay, mirror imaging. As we've discussed, we've got our, all of our tooth libraries is what's on the left is on the right, okay? And you may have noticed that all of our tooth libraries have this simple mesh up top here, which we can then open up to make an open, open tooth library very easily. But we, now we are in this um, specific mo um, um, folder and we can then go, okay, let us straighten these teeth. So all I need to do is click on this, this specific tooth and we can then go mirror to select it. And then we can, we can simply just grab this and we can, um, we can place it wherever we want and we can rotate it and straighten it, Rx, bring it down. And when we're finished, accept transforms. And we do the same with this one mirror to select it. So we've got a lot of flexibility with, with this mirror imaging to do a lot of things. Except this one and this one, mirror. And they turn gray, that, that just gives us an indication that yes, these are active, we are working with these teeth. Mm. 
except transforms. And here we go, we've, we've basically straightened these things. The same thing applies with matching. So just say, for example, um, we, we don't like this specific tooth. Um, or or we've, cha we've changed the mesh irreversibly for this specific um, tooth. So to change a mesh, it's very easy. We just click on the dynamic um, um, proportional editing uh, uh, tool there, and then we can just we can just grab and we can just change whatever uh, however we want this tooth to be. So there's it's a quick way of changing teeth. When we're doing crowns, for example, we can bring it closer to the contact. But say, for example, I've, I've made irreversible damage to this tooth. I can bring in a new tooth like this, select that one, select that one, match to tooth, and then accept, and then delete this one, and we're back to square one, voila. It's as so, easy Michael, as that. Michael, this, this way of sculpting is like um, so much faster than going with a, a sculpting brush and adding, you know, forever here and here and taking away. You just, you're just grabbing a vertice and pulling it just in a direction that you want. Exactly. And I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit more what I mean with that. So we're going to open up another file. I think it's this one, I think. Yeah, this one, for example. So we did, in our video, we did a full mouth rehabilitation, wax up, and the lowers have not been, this is in mind of making temporaries, by the way, for this specific case. We would then take a tooth, just say we take all these front teeth, we join them up, and then, because I want to work on all of them in one go, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go edit mode and that will then flick on these two, the magnet tool and the proportional editing tool is on. And then I'll just left click just anywhere over here and you then use the G key. And then we can, every time you, you use a G key, the, the, the mesh sticks to where the cursor is. So we can easily just bring out this mesh. And if we wanted to bring this mesh out by exactly 0 0.5 millimeters, we click on a certain vertice over here and we can either pull or we can push this mesh. So we've got a shortcut here, control arrow down, we'll pull it. So I'll go control arrow down by 0 0.5 millimeters. Or I can just simply click on this one. So we know, and this is very important because when we're doing crowns later on and the crown is touching the tooth preparation, for example, we would then click on it and pull it by 0 0.5 millimeter and we know we can melt zirconia at 0 0.5 millimeters. So the occlusal surface will be then thick enough just by one click. Okay, and of course we can we can push it down. So I can um, control arrow forward, 0 0.5. So we've got perfect control of how thick we can make this. Okay, this is a very important feature to have. And then um, of course again we can go thickness tool. We can select model, and then we can take all of these and we can view the heat map. And then we can e enter the sculpting mode and then we can sculpt it and make it thicker if we want to just by sculpting it, okay? So it, it's, it's a little bit like pulling a sock. So if you wanted to pull something, you go into edit and then you click and then just G, you just pull it. So pulling a sock over your, your toe, okay? Or we can do all in one go. We can, or few in one go. We can select teeth, join them, and then edit. And then we've got all of these at our disposal in one go. So we can just like pull it. Okay. Okay. 
So are there any questions related to this? And then I can jump to the next, next one. Uh, maybe regarding that subject, after you 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 pull uh, the tooth where you want regarding the voxel remesh and and uh, you, but you probably wanted to continue now with the voxel remesh of the pulled tooth. Oh yeah, so the I voxel remesh we, we 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 would we would leave right at the end if we're doing a boolean function. If we wanted to print it, we would just select the teeth in the model and send it to the printer and print it. So we, we don't need to mm -hmm. vox, voxel remesh anything at that stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, regarding this voxel remeshing subject, uh, 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 before doing a, a Boolean cut operation, uh, 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 which kind of uh, which kind of uh, procedure do you suggest mostly? Is it uh, like uh, like uh, like voxel remesh or this? There is also quadriflow remesh, and there is also a kind of uh, reducing the model uh, the size. Uh, which which procedure do you find as a most uh, convenient? Uh, uh, for for boolean cut operation regarding the the redu the subject of reducing the model file which you want well, to cut well um reducing the model file we'd only use when there is excessive amount of vertices in the model and then we would mm -hmm. reduce a model model file if it's a if it's a, a reasonable amount and and you will very quickly learn how what a reasonable amount is so I mean, in in edit mode, you, you're going to edit mode, and you look at it. This is a reasonable amount, but if yeah. if you look at it from a distance and it's all like dense black, then I would say, oh, we need to definitely yeah, um, so reduce much. the model file, definitely. Yeah, um, Michael, I've got a question um, regarding cement gap. Um, so we do have an engineering gap. Um, we can have a clearance between when we, if we do temporize these cases, we factor in a, a clearance spacer. And I don't know if you're going to show this in a minute, Michael. No, I was going to actually make temporaries with this full mouth rehabilitation. Okay, all right. So we, we, we don't need, so th this, is, this is assuming that the, um, um, the dentist would prep each and every single tooth. Mm. For, for example, so if you wanted like, like, a spacer, for example, the model, which is the dental model, is being used as a cutting tool, and that will be offset. offset in the tutorial. You'll see it'll be offset by your whatever amount you want, which essentially makes the model bigger, and then it's going to cut out the 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 temporaries. Okay. And in the SP, bigger version, essentially, you're going to have a gap of that offset between the temporary and the tooth in the mouth. So if you can call that a cement spacer, yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a cement spacer, um, but yeah. Mm. All right, so um, assuming now we've done our wax up and it looks like this, and you know, we're all familiar with these wax ups by now. We're going to select the teeth and we don't want to destroy what we've done. We want to duplicate these teeth. So I'm going to click duplicate. Again, they're going to go into a different folder, duplicate folder, so we can we, we can grab them at a later stage in case we muck, we, we muck it up. Okay, then what we're going to do is I'm going to voxel remesh this whole thing. Now, if you wanted to voxel remesh all of it, you make sure they are joined. And there's a bit of a trick to this because let me separate these teeth. So separate, okay? So if I, for example, go B key and I select all of them and one is not in orange, yeah? That means they won't join. If you all see them all in red, they're not gonna join. One of them, you shift left click, one of them has to be in orange. And then you click on join and then they will all join. So. If ever you get to the stage and they don't join, just click on one. So I'm going to click on voxel remesh, and we'll just we'll just keep this at 0 0.1 for now, okay? Which is quite a fine mesh, 
And again, you'll see that these are joined at the moment. I'm going to go apply, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the model as a cutting tool. So we can see, let me go in transparent mode. We can see the, the teeth going through there. And we're going to then say, okay, this is an object being cut. And we're going to then, it'll select and then we're going to select this one as the object making the cut. And then we'll just wait for it. Okay, so it's it's trimmed it. It's trimmed it. We, we can verify whether it's trimmed it by hiding the top model. Yeah, that's fine. And we're going to apply that then. Okay. Now, in Blender, when you, when you do a Boolean cut and you have all the vertices selected in one, and none of them in the other, the beauty about this blender is that it will then select all the insides of the, um, of the surfaces that have just been cut. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to apply this cut. Okay, now in edit mode, you'll see, okay, wow, okay which is very important because we now want to delete the inside cutting surface, okay? Now, this, this gives us an open shell. Don't try and print it because you'll never print this shell. It's not going to work. There's no thickness to it. We're going to go to our Pontic designs and we're going to go make temporary shell. And this will put a wall thickness to our temporaries and then following that, we can then smooth it. Now we have to, we have to voxel remesh this because of the intersecting vertices. So we're going to accept this, voxel remesh it, and we're going to just give it a quick smooth. And we've got a full arch upper temporary restoration. Okay. That's very impressive because, you know, making a temporary like this, it's going to cost you a lot of time in the chair, eh? or is, is, is lads yeah. are going to, you know, takes, takes ages, doesn't it, Michael? Yeah, and not only that, is we've, we've got the exact duplication of the wax up, you know, and yeah. we've shown, we've presented the wax up to the patient, and, you know, we've got all of these, um, this temporary is then finished. So there's no outlining of, you know, uh, like outlining the temporaries or anything. It, we're using the, the model as a cutting tool to, you know, to and cut And then you it create the wall with... thickness on that and then now it's ready for printing. So what was a wall thickness, did you say, say Michael? Or We've got you... it set to zero, 0 0.8. Well, that's a but printable. This, this will, mm. Yeah, I mean, if we could print thinner, that would be even more ideal. But I think this depends on our current technology as well, you know, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. So is there, are there any questions related to this? So I just wanted to ask it. Uh, uh, Actually, you are able to uh, 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 position the uh, not hollowed tooth to the margin lines. So in that sense, smooth to the margin lines. And just after, uh, I didn't understand yes. this whole detail, you know, because if you are able to, to pull the not, uh, solid tooth to the margin lines everywhere, to the yes. gingiva lines, yes. And yes. uh, uh, in order also, uh, then you make a duplication of this, everything, what you did, if I understood correctly. Yes. And just after that, you enter to this menu function, make uh, um, hollow or, or, or make temporaries. Because still, I didn't come to these last points yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it will, it, it will come clear to you once we go into the next section. Great. Great. Okay, Great. so so it'll all Thank it'll all make sense then. Yeah. So this this is typical pre prep. N none of these teeth are prepped. Pre prep. Yeah. Pre prep. Yeah. Pre yeah. prep temporaries. Pre -prep. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So we can do post prep 
temporaries. Are you heading into that now, Michael? Using patients' um, no. existing teeth? No, I just wanted to quickly go through. Yeah, actually we can. Okay. Okay, okay. patients' teeth. All right. So often we are presented with a front single central tooth, which is like really difficult to um, duplicate with even a tooth library, for example. So the, 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 the good thing is if we can, um, we can just um, use the, the tooth that is there. So, okay, so let us cut this tooth off. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is so, we want to Michael, duplicate. When you say cut it off, we yeah. So we make you making a duplicate so we can use that tooth one one to duplicate a yep. temporary for two one. Hundred percent. Okay, so do, we'll make a duplicate. So let's just do this again. Make a duplicate. <laughs> What's going on? Just give me a second. Uh, I was working on this earlier, so maybe it's it's hidden. Duplicate models, hidden. Okay, duplicate is there already. So, okay, we've got the. I'll just call this upper, upper. Okay. Oh, I've I've been working on this earlier. That's this is why. So, okay. Oh gosh. All right. Okay. Make duplicates model. Just give me a second just to move this over, call this upper. Okay, so that should that should do the trick. Okay. So it's always good to actually know this how this works, this whole thing. All right, let's just do this again. Make duplicate. All right, now we're back to square one. All right, so we made a duplicate and we're going to then click, um, we're going to cut out this tooth, okay? We're going to say gum line, draw gum line, and this it's clearly marked gum line. And here we're going to stretch it. We can stretch it quite far, as far as the curve will allow. We're going to grab it right through the tooth and we're going to then connect it to the other side. And by now, I'm sure we all know, shift, left click to select the other one and F to fuse. Next thing we have to do is we're going to mark this gum line. That makes it a little bit pink and it'll tell us, now it's called contact line. It's a, uh, it's a sweet reminder that we are now having to draw the contact, if there is a contact. If there's no contact, we leave that out. We're going to select a vertice close to the contact and we're going to click offset contact line and that will tell us in our tool tips as well. Very important. Otherwise, if you don't do this, it's not going to offset. Okay, we're going to E to extrude and we're going to extrude all the way over the contact area. So make sure the, the vertices don't touch, but with a bit of practice, that's it's very easy to do. Click on the other one, F to fuse, and we make sure that there's no sharp edges over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to then section the tooth. And this is very similar to our, um, what's that, die, making dies. If, if there's vertice that's intersecting, then just grab and pull the vertice up, all right? Then we're gonna cut this. Now this, this leaves us with our specific tooth. All right, so we've got our duplicate model and we've got our original model and we can select which, which one we're going to be viewing if we want to. So what, what I want to do is I want to mirror this now to the other side. So I'm going to click on mirror and that will click it to the other side. Now you'll see that it's cut it off our duplicate model. Now this is useful because if we want to make um, a denture, um, an immediate denture for example, we would be using this tool, okay? But now I don't want to necessarily see this specific um, object. I may want to see the other object, which I've got, I've got now. Michael, can okay. you color, so, um, color allocate um, these models? Yeah, I, I can, I can definitely. So, 
I just want to grab the, the correct model. So um, let's just color that. We'll just look for a color, um, um, one of these color things uh, in one of these here. <coughs> color here, add color. And we'll just give it a bit of a, oh, I've selected the wrong one, sorry. Just color. So we can just see the difference between the two, okay? Uh, okay, this 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 is a model. This is a duplicate. This is a duplicate model we're working on. So I'll, I'll just hide this, and we're going to color this one. Okay, like that. Okay. So we've got our duplicate model. Uh, we've used our duplicate model to make the tooth. Now from here on, we we're missing a whole section up top here, and in our in our pontic. This is where our Pontic one comes in perfectly because we can, we, I'll just hide this so we can see what's going on. So in our Pontic one, we can open the tooth mesh, which is open it up. And now um, this is exactly like the big temporary that we did earlier, okay? Once we've got an open tooth mesh, there's a lot we can do with it. For example, we can, we can um, make a, make a temp or the, yeah this one doesn't look so so flash because oh, well, um, I'll show you in a second because we have to close it first so what what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it and then we're going to change it to bullet shape okay and in this because we were missing a whole piece here just hide this one sorry okay there were, Okay, so what I want to do is I want to extract this one outwards. So we're going to edit toggle this, and then we can use the G key to bring it out this way. Okay, so in transparent mode, all I've done is I've extended this one upwards like this. Okay, and then we can, we, we can get out of that easy. So I just want to hide the one model. This one here, I don't need it, X delete. That's better, okay. All right, so we've got a duplicate tooth there, and we've extended the neck, and of course, then we can we can smooth this. This just give a quick smooth like that, okay. Okay, like that, and then we're going to exit the smooth, and we're going to just pull this mesh inwards a little bit. So, um, all right, so. Let's just get out of the smooth and we're going to go up here and we're going to go pull mesh exactly like we did before, like, like, a, like a sock. So edit. All right, so like this and we're just going to pull it like a sock. Like that, okay? And that's our tooth. All right. And of course, then we can make a temporary exactly like in the in the example beforehand. All right. Are there any questions? I think that's quite a nice looking tooth, Wolfgang, from a ceramist point of view. Hmm? I, I think it is, Michael. Um, it's looking good. All right. So we've got a copy there. All right. So if happy to answer a few questions. Oh, all good. Michael, can you, um, with a bit of remaining time, are you just going to demo the gum bit, how to put gum, or are you going to make a bridge at the on the other side? No, I don't think there's time for that. Um, how much time do we have left? Oh, about 15 minutes or 10 minutes kind of thing. Okay, so um, I was just going to... Um, yeah, okay, let, let, let us do that. So I'll just delete everything here. A, X, delete. Okay, so we'll bring in the open tooth library. Import generic hollow. Choose teeth. We'll just take this the six front teeth. Delete unwanted, and we're going to place these. All right. So, okay, so we've got all of these are hollow. And if we wanted to say, for example, close a tooth, 
we will then go into our Pontic design and click close Judith. I will open up another window so we can actually see what is going on. Okay, so here, this tooth is closed. Now we have to view this from the top, otherwise it's not going to work. It's exactly like when we're making dyes, it actually extrudes away from us. So if we wanted to change this to flat, for example, it's been changed to flat. At any stage, we can edit this. If we lose the selection, we click on select apex and then we can grab and change this any way, way we want to. If we, and then we can um, open up this tooth mesh again. Um, we can change it to bullet shape. We can change it to ridge lap shape or um, we can then make the gum as well. So in the, in the neighbor tooth, what I'll do is we're going to select that tooth and then we're going to, in the gum, we're going to create gum. And what that does, it extrudes gum out of that specific uh, tooth. And that's very cool because when we're making dentures, for example, we or just say we've got a, um, a, a lot of uh, um, bone missing, for example, we can then add gum. So let's choose both three teeth. We're going to join them, create gum, and we can then have an extrusion out of the three specific teeth. So we can do an entire arch very, very easily. So here we go. And then we can edit the base. And this is very important if we want to bring that into a denture, for example. And we can edit the margins and then um, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remesh this. And then this, once it's remeshed, it's suitable for our sculpting. So I'll just give it a quick sculpt, but I'm, I'm not going to discuss too much about the, the sculpting because Blender has so much, so many sculpting tools. Just bring that in a little bit. So one can get very artistic, can do lots of stuff with it. Okay, and then we're going to exit. So um, from here, kind of so exit sculpt. And then we can, if we say do a try and hypothetically, so f just for a minute visualize, we've done a try and, and the patient wants to move a specific tooth. And we don't want to recreate all the gum again. We want to use what we have. So this is, this is what we call sticky gum. And we're going to select the sticky gum and then we're going to select the tooth that we want to move. So I'm going to select this specific tooth and we're going to click on select and move tooth. And this is very cool because this allows us to then shift and change this according to our new position. And if we want to move another tooth, we, we just click select tooth and the algorithm will then be placed on that specific tooth. And this is like really, this is actually, it's fun. Now, this is going to be um, very important in our future orthodontic module because then we can move teeth, make gum, and then print a model as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so you but can we add don't a want texture to, to it, Marco? Yes. So we're going to exit the sticky gum and then we're going to add, ah, that was the tooth texture the tooth and we're going to just click on um, gum texture and it will texture. Now in Blender there's a lot of different textures and you can play around the whole day. You can even make your own textures. So this is just a cloud texture. So yeah mm. and, and then we can we, we can accept the accept this as well. So mm. that's very fast to to make. Mm, okay. That's incredible. Um, Michael, how would you make thimbles? Can you just describe that? All right, thimbles are used when we're making big zirconia crown, um, 
bridges, for example, and you need the splint module to do that because you would maybe paint a, a section of the top of the arch, for example, which is then joined to implants, and then we need tooth preps on the inside of our crowns. Now this is easily done because we can, we'll select a, a specific tooth, say this one here, and then what we do again, it extrudes away from my, 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 my face. So get a nice position. What does help is if you go into transparent mode and then you see the, the loop at the bottom and we, we can place this like this and then if it's equidistance from the outside perimeter for example we know that it's the long axis of the tooth if it's like that it's not the long axis of the tooth so this can help especially if we're doing multiple thimbles because we want to get the path of insertion it's like mill telescopic work now this is an entrance almost into mill, mill, milling mill crowns corners crown all right, so once we've got this, we're going to then um, go to our Pontic design and click on design thimble. All right, so that'll give us a 90 degree parallel thimble. And I've especially done it 90 degree because then we can scale it down mathematically. But we, we didn't really, we haven't got into it. We can say S0.0. 99 for example 0 0.9 and you can then work out what angle that is you know if you wanted to have a two or three degree angle we'd have to then go from a parallel and scaling it down so um here i'm just going to use the s key to arbitrarily scale it down and the g key and the r key And then once we're sort of okay with our post or prep or whatever you want to call it, we're going to look at it from the top again and we're going to click on complete thimble. So this has now brought out our, our tooth prep like this. And then this then we can then join onto our, if you can visualize our structure, which we want to then mill out of zirconia, for example. Like for an uh, implant put, frame, for example, with Emacs exactly. crowns on top of that. We, the internet is flooded with, with photos of, of people doing this type of work. And, you know, there's, you know we can easily do this now. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a major um, mm. obstacle mm. anymore. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Awesome. Good. Um, Good. Are there any questions little... regarding the module? Um, just one question. Uh, you tell about the, the angle and that we can scale it, but if it's possible that in the future we have a nice slider and when you slide you have the, the exact angle you are going to? No? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. We, we can look into that. Yeah, we can look into that. Otherwise, you have to make some calcul to have the nice angle. And if you are doing some telescope, I think it would be also very nice. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be quite good. Uh, Michael, can you just so quickly if, talk about the offset on those thimbles? Uh, I've, I've already exited, Wolfgang. Okay, all right. Um, so, so, so what we would do, we would then use in the wax up module at the bottom, we'd use this cutting tool here in pink because that will then create it's very similar to the insert um, menu in our model designer where it actually duplicates our cutting tool makes it an offset layer which we choose it remeshes the offset new new offset object and then it will use that object to cut our our um, th thimble so we actually use the thimbles to make an offset model so um, you if get you want to clear go back, yeah. Mm. yeah. Shall I go back into it? Or? No, no, don't. No? It's all right, Mike. So you, we're just talking about the clearance between the thimble and the crown itself. Okay. Exactly. So um, if we've got a few minutes left, I'll just quickly show what is possible with the wax up module. 
Okay. And here we've got a, you know, we've got an edentulous ridge here. And say, for example, we want to, to remove a, a few teeth here, for example, we will then use the, um, um, the cutting of it. So we'll go into the, this menu here, we'll make a duplicate model, and then we'll, we'll draw the gum line, use a G key, and the E key. And this is, this is ideal because we can easily um, then make a um, socketed model for a partial denture design, for example. So what I'll do is I'll mark the gum line and we're going to now um, section, section the tooth, okay? And we're going to cut, cut these teeth off the model. Okay, so I'm going to X delete, and this leaves us with a little bit of a socket in our um, in our gum. You can socket it even further if you wanted to. If you wanted to, to um, sculpt it deeper, for example, or you could have ex extruded the actual um, the apex, the die. Mm. Yeah, the apex would have been easy to extrude. So that's very quickly done. I'm going to exit and I'll just quickly head into a few other things if I can, but it all works with our wax up module because this is, this is something that people can then, then do by themselves already. So what, what, what we would then, for, for example, if we wanted to make a denture, we'd, we'd need to block it out, right? So, okay, so we'll, we'll just quickly give it a, um, a block out. So create offset, and we're gonna apply this and finish it. So this requires a little bit of thinking. Okay. So we will then just quickly give it a survey, something like, like this. We can mark the undercuts and we'll just create um, a, a passive, uh, sorry, a, a model. So I may cut out there for a second. Am I still there? Yeah, yeah, you're all good. Just have a shot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> nice water. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Isn't that morning? <laughs> All right. Have I cut out yet? No, no, you haven't, Michael. No, it's been one minute. Okay. Okay, it's just... By the way, the blockout module is translated in French now. Oh, really? Oh, fantastic. Well done. Jeez. Lots of work that, isn't it? Well, the blockout is was quite easy. It's a, it's a nice small module, but uh, and there is like one video, so it's okay. Yeah. But the okay. articulator one is a, is a big one. Yeah, that's, that's big, isn't it? So we'll just quickly go into the splint one and then we will just paint a, a layer quickly. So paint layer. Oh, Wolfgang, that is loud. I don't I've know, are you making down. noises? It's not me, Michael. I thought it. I thought you were making noises again or something. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll just give a quick paint, and then we'll bring in the wax up module to to demonstrate exactly what I've got in mind here. So I mean, this used to take ages. How long did it take you to make a like acrylic base with salt and pepper method, Wolfgang? Uh, never hmm? worked with acrylic, Michael. <laughs> you You're liar. getting me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm thinking now. I'm thinking Valplast or something like that. You know, it's it's quick to make a. Uh, I believe there's Valplast printers on the market at the moment. I think I'm I'm not familiar with them though, but. But idea for so, flexible okay. material, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we've gone straight over our socket and we're going to accept this. 
we'll just give it a bit of a smooth and then we'll bring in the wax up module just to do a little bit of gum just to to demonstrate you know what what is capable now just give this a bit of a wrap down like that all right that's good and we'll finish this layer okay finish okay so let's bring in our um our wax up module okay so we've got our beautiful little this is why our splint module is way more than splints isn't it wolfgang hey? yeah that's right that's right we yeah, might really have to rename cool. it something i don't know maybe maybe there's a better name for it yeah maybe maybe we can think of something but, oh, oh, okay so what we'll do is we'll bring in a um a hollow tooth library so import hollow all right so we need we need a few teeth here so what i'll i'll select okay we need the canine this one and this one i believe and then we're going to do delete unwanted and i'm just going to move this down because we we, we this one i haven't centered into the into the actual um correct position if you know what i mean so with the articulate with the mounting table you're talking about exactly yeah so i'm just going to scale this a little bit something like that beautiful and we're just going to have a look and we're going to then use the r key and the g key all right so we've got them in position let us just give this one no we don't you know no, we'll just leave that color the way it is. And now here, this is this is this is what I'm talking about. We need the, the gum module to do this, the, the wax up gum, because we're missing a whole section. All right. Um so let's do this. What I'll do is we'll we'll select we'll select these, all right, and I will join them, okay. And then what we'll do is we will go to the the extrusion of the gum. We just look for pink, and you'll see pink is gum. We've got two pinks. The darker pink is for using patients' teeth, and then the light pink is a gum. And we'll just click create gum. All right. So let's see what happens. So that will extrude my gum over here it's a bit of a different color it doesn't doesn't matter and then we're going to edit the base edit base and we're going to then scale and we use the g key to bring it inside the model actually we can scale it a little bit more we can we can actually make this a little bit um smaller the gum so we'll just exit and we will make this a little bit smaller like that something something like that and i'll edit the base again and we will then grab this using the g key like that just grab it in there grab like that something like that all right so that's good and then what we'll do is we will we'll we'll just remesh it so um okay so we'll exit here and we're going to remesh this gum so um voxel remesh all right so and we're going to accept that okay and then following that we can join the two so i want to just make sure that i'm joining the correct one so in transparent mode yeah got the gum and we will just take this this section here and all oh, right have a have a voxel we meshed it i forgot sorry <laughs> okay. okay so yeah so what we'll do is we'll select both the layer now the layer and our gum so make sure you get this correct the layer and our gum and we're going to then join them remember if we want to voxel remesh two objects they have to be joined. You can't just select them, though. you've got to join them. And then we will voxel remesh because that will make it one unit. Okay, like this. 
accept it, and then we can smooth it. Okay, and then we've got our denture. Yeah. Ready and for smooth. print. No, not not quite yet no. because we still have to we we still have to do the um um the cut, the, the boolean cut to get out of the um the fitting surface, remember? We yeah. don't have the fitting surface done. All right, so I'll just leave it at that. Accept. Okay, that's good. And then we will go to the bottom section. And this is going to be our, our model, our select object being cut. And don't, don't select the wrong model because we, we need to duplicate this, the model, the blocked out version to make our cut, our fitting surface. And apply that, apply. And then finally, we, we still need to cut out our teeth, okay? So I'm gonna select the teeth. I'm going to join them up. I'm gonna duplicate these teeth like we've done beforehand. I'm going to voxel remesh the teeth, apply that. And then this is the object being cut. And the other object is the object making the cut. And then we're gonna apply that. And then we're gonna hide our model and we've got our denture. Beauty, beauty. Okay, all right. Yeah, very good, very good. Good, good, just a quick demonstration. All right, you, you surprised me oh. with that one, Mike. Again, don't tell me anything. <laughs> right. cool. Good stuff, okay. Awesome. Are there any questions related to the module as such? I just wanted to ask you regarding the, 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 the cutting the tooth later. Are you using this socketing tool uh, um, add-on at a wax up uh, in order to make the right positions for a tooth? Uh, for example, this prosthesis now. Because you started from um, you started from from paint on layer in the in the in the splint model combined with the yes. wax up, uh, then you made a cut of uh, of uh, um, all fitting services surfaces, and uh, later on, for example, now if you wanna if you wanna prepare the the, the um, surface of uh, basis. To be fitted into the, if you want to set the print separately. I'm oh, they print separately. All right. So what what I would what I would do is I would I would take I would take my model. So this model here, mm -hmm. and then what what I would do is in the block art mod module, I would go in and say I'm going to offset this at way bigger. I will say. Um, maybe two millimeters, okay? Create mm -hmm. offset, and I would set this at two millimeters. So this is a big model, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll apply this, all right? So then what I'll do is I'll, I'll voxel remesh it, and this will be my cutting tool. I wanna use this as a cutting tool underneath my teeth, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that it creates a space. Okay, this may or may not work, but uh, what, what, we, what we will do is we will create some videos about this because we, we want a quick method to, to make the, the denture teeth shorter so that we can then glue them into the base. That's what you basically mean, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. So now I'm just thinking, okay, we're going to lose our contacts, which is not, for, for an edentulous case, this would work. Mm -hmm. so, so 
so I was heading down the wrong, for an edentulous case, this is fine, mm -hmm. but for a partial then it wouldn't. But what I would then do is I would probably, when, we, when we're making the hollow, when we're using the hollow teeth and we're extruding the teeth, we can then extrude them a little bit short off the model. Does that, do, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Before, like two yeah. millimeters away, mm -hmm. away from the model. Yeah, mm -hmm. and use them as a cutting tool later. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I yeah. get. It. Thanks. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. All right. So yeah. Yeah. Well I done, Michael. Sort of con concludes it today. Excellent. Um, well, thank you for joining once again, and um, yeah, we'll stay in touch. Next week we'll probably demo something else. Perhaps we'll go back onto. Um, Michael's just busy with stackable implants. So he's just designing some attachments for the second and the tertiary level. Mm -hmm. Perhaps um, we could do something like that, hey, Michael? I think so, yeah. I, th I think so. Let's do that. A stackable implant case, yeah. Um, for <laughs> sorry? Thanks for developing. <laughs> That's all good. And I'll, I'll get you that, um, that tooth, that uh, components module, how to create yeah. the thumbnails. All good. So, um, all yes, right. Good. We'll, we'll call it quits for today and um, hope you can join us on another occasion. Really appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Good. Cheers. Bye, man. Okay. Just one question, Wolfgang. Yep. Uh, about the website, everything is back to to normal or not? Yes, it is. Um, we had, ah, uh, this week's been a tough one. Sometimes these things come our way. How Some of the it? links were broken with the activation. Um, but yes, it is, it is working now. So um, the language coding, it, it, it's got a slightly different feature, still easy to use, um, but um, yeah, fully functional. Okay, that's all right. I will tell you the games. All good. I'll be. I'll, I'll. I'll get into contact with you tomorrow about that. Um, the website. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you very much, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. See ya.